I'm Nigel Clark. I'm Chair of Social Sustainability at Lancaster University. Uh, and I'm Catherine Yusuf. I'm a reader in Human Geography at Queen Mary uh, University of London. Uh, and we're here today to talk about our special issue, uh, geosocial formations and the Anthropocene. So the term geosocial formations uh, was your device, uh, Nigel. So could you tell us a bit about how it came into the world and what prompted yeah. your thinking? Um, I guess it was, it was trying to think about the idea of the Anthropocene and not just the sense of there being a, a new era, a new era in which humans, some humans are, are geological agents, but what's, what's kind of behind all this? What does it really mean to think about human agency and the agency of the earth together? And it kind of seemed obvious that, that, that we talk about social formations and earth scientists talk about geological formations and really to, to kind of put them together. Um, and I guess what they've both got in common is the sense that the past forms a kind of a, a background, a platform out of which the, the new emerges. And that seems to be what, what we have in common between social formations and geological formations. So it's really just, just kind of way like putting those, those two things together and out it came. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one of the things that we explore in the introduction is actually how these two things have been together for much longer than um, in terms of the way in which thought has to negotiate with kind of geophysical forces. Yeah, so the idea behind that, that really wherever there is, whether there is social life, whether, whether there's social thought, somewhere in the background, somewhere making it possible is, is the earth. Um, the earth is always there. So in a sense, there's no social formations without uh, geological formations they're always they're always there underneath beyond in the background making it possible um, I wouldn't go the other way around there are plenty of geological formations with no with no social in them so there's a kind of an asymmetry there that, that for me you can't have social formations without geological formations but there are plenty plenty layers mm -hmm. of geology without without any kind of social footprint social kind of mark on them. I mean, I think that's one of the things that's been really interesting for me is just thinking about how geology is a kind of is the context in which social relations emerge, and thinking about these kinds of the sort of hinge between the social and the geologic as a kind of way of enabling and kind of organising uh, social relations that often gets kind of forgotten in the way in which we articulate a kind of politics of the social. Mm -hmm. And I guess we've got to think about why there why there hasn't been mm -hmm. more geology, more earth science, more conversation between social science mm -hmm. and and earth science in the past. And, um, kind of strange when you know the last couple of hundred years have seen so much excavation, mm -hmm. so much digging into the earth, so many issues revolving around kind of earth processes. But I think really. Social scientists have been reluctant. There's been this sort of assumption that, that the earth was always there and the earth was something that kind of held you back, something that was that was still and stable and in a sense could hold us back from, from you know what the social or the political could achieve. Um, the idea that, that the earth is, is still and that it's a, it, it holds you back, it grounds you, is kind of strange in a way. I mean, you know, we've known for an awful long time that the, the earth was, was active and moving and, and shifting. So it's kind of odd how it got to stand for something stable, something static, something that, that holds back the, the social or the political. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think in the Anthropocene, we're also seeing a new kind of geology emerge as well that has these kind of speculative uh, aspects to it in terms of how it's thinking about its new fossils and its kind of role in shaping social and kind of political thought around the kind of relation to the earth. Mm. I think that the speculative side of, of earth science is interesting. That's one of the reasons why we were really keen, you know, to get mm -hmm. to get some, some earth scientists uh, actually on board in the issue. I think it's the first time in, in theory, culture, society that actually had Earth scientists, um, geoscientists, contributing to an issue, and the sense that that Earth science itself is is changing, is is shifting, is is becoming something that it wasn't um, a few decades ago. In the sense that 
part of it is around kind of speculating what will the earth become like, what will the earth look like from the future, looking back to our present era. And it's a, it's a really interesting time for, for earth science. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's great to have earth scientists on board. And for us as social, cultural thinkers to be conversing as, as closely as we can with, with earth scientists. Because one of the things that has emerged in terms of Anthropocene debates more widely is this kind of question of difference of how we deal with stratification of the social through a kind of concept like the Anthropocene that kind of lumps us all together in. um, But one of the things that we we were quite keen to think about is also how we deal uh, not just with a sort of stratified uh, social uh, set of relations, but also a stratified earth, uh, kind of the many earths that um, Yan talks about in the collection. Yeah, that that sense that the Earth and its its different kind of layers, mm-hmm. its different strata, is also um, is also a set of, of possibilities that mm-hmm. that you know some of our difference as as human beings, some of our collective differences actually come partly through the Earth. So rather than thinking that we have to think social difference rather than the differences of mm-hmm. the earth, that we can think these two things together um, and that, that thinking actually kind of through the earth might be a way of helping us think about difference, whether mm-hmm. it, it's kind of, you know, cultural difference, gender differences, uh, through earth processes, through the different strata of the earth, through the different properties of the earth. And that, I think, has a, has a huge amount of, of potential. Um, so we were really delighted when um, some of our kind of key thinkers in uh, feminist geophilosophy uh, engaged in a special issue, and particularly because unlike, I think, a lot of the um, new materialist work that has been kind of engaging with um, a certain kind of uh, biological entity or a certain kind of uh, amenable kind of force of life, um, the, the, the thinkers that we've engaged with in this special issue have really kind of thrown up an engagement with the inorganic and thinking about kind of materiality and its kind of cosmological uh, dimensions and thinking about the kind of the proposition of life as just one iteration of a kind of, uh, you know, being situated within uh, the cosmos and not just kind of uh, within the cosmos but of the cosmos. Um, so we've got some uh, key kind of uh, discussions um, from Elizabeth Gross around geopower, um, from Beth Povanelli around geoontopower, which is trying to kind of think about this kind of governance or the traffic between non-life and life, and um, by Andrew Lars around geopoetics and geopolitics. Um, and these are suggesting some very different directions for um, thinking about kind of uh, geosocial formations than I think we've seen in a lot of the kind of work that appends a geo in front of kind of uh, thinking about social uh, relations. I mean, we were, we were very thrilled with the way that, that our authors kind of picked up and ran with the idea and, and the some of the reason why we were, we were so keen to have the, some of the people who have contributed to the issue is, is precisely because of really making the, the geo do some work, really thinking not just about the earth, but, but thinking kind of with and through the earth. And that, that for us, I think, is a, it's a really exciting moment in, in social thought. It opens up so many kind of possibilities um, at a time when sometimes it feels like some possibilities are are kind of shutting down on us, but but thinking with and through the earth, it's obviously not always, doesn't always have a happy ending, it's not always a positive thing, the earth can kind of overwhelm you, undermine you as much as it can make things possible, but it does seem like an exciting moment for social thought, that thinking through the earth does seem to kind of open up a whole lot of new possibilities, ways of thinking, ways of doing things.